Hi YouTubers, Jeff Cote here with another session on Ask PYS. So we've got a question of a power, well actually a cell builder. Cell builder says, Jeff, I've seen a huge amount of questions, misinformation regarding the electrical part of my boat. They confuse the neutral with the negative and with the grounding. It would be great if you could explain who's who and when and cannot and when they cannot be linked together. All right, if you're not confused about grounds, um, then you're probably not reading or listening because grounds are honestly one of the most confusing part about marine electrical systems. It took me a long time to figure it out. So grounds are multiple things. There's a lot of grounds on our boat. So let's start naming them. There's AC grounds, DC grounds, RF grounds, lightning grounds, bonding grounds. All those grounds are basically common, meaning they're connected to one another. And that's very important. You cannot have different grounds that are floating. Okay, so they need to be common and that's where the, you, the term common ground comes from. So all these grounds have to be connected together to be at the same potential, i.e. common. And so you're gonna have an AC ground on your boat, the DC ground, which is pretty common on most of us, right? A lot of our boats have AC and DC, and it's very essential when we do surveys, these electrical audits on boats, we're always looking, making sure there's a, a ground tie between the DC ground and the AC ground of the boat. Same thing with the bonding. A lot of boats have bonding systems. All these through hauls on the boat, all these underwater metals, they're all connected together, but you've got to make sure that that bonding system is also common to the DC ground and the AC ground. A neutral, and this was one of the questions here, a neutral is also tied to ground. Now, it's not tied permanently, it's always tied at the source of power. So for instance, when you're connected to shore power, you're going to actually have the ground, AC ground, and the neutral are going to be tied together at the source of power at the transformer at the dock. If you don't, if you have a generator, again, same thing, the neutral and the AC ground are tied together at the source of power because the AC grounding or the green wire needs to go back to the source. And if you have an inverter, your inverter, and it's a marine inverter, is actually going to do a ground tie between the AC neutral and the AC ground whenever your inverter is working. So that's the concept on AC grounds and AC neutrals. When you look at these marine diagrams, and we've got all these conceptual diagrams on our website, they have an ideal boat. Certainly the American Boat Yacht Console, ABYC, has this sort of perfect boat. This boat that I've yet to see or will ever see, where all these grounds are going on this one common ground bar. Most of us don't have that. And when I say most of us, I mean like 99.999% of us do not have a common ground point. What generally happens is the DC ground on our boat is the common and everything gets connected back to that. And so a lot of boat builders will use the DC, they'll ground that and they'll have all the other grounds connected back to this DC distribution. So that's why it's confusing is because the theory is never really applied in reality the way that we would see it in the standards or in the schematics. And that's what's so hard for all of us is we're trying to map what we're told should happen and what actually happens on a boat. And we've got videos on grounds, by the way, that I could do a video on grounds that could last two hours. I'd bore most of you, but it is very interesting because it's so freaking complicated. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, ask them down below or go on our website to fill one of the forms. Also, support to keep this YouTube channel ad-free by donating on PayPal or purchasing some merchandise on our store. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.